Welcome back, folks, to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. Today's show, we have Tim Taylor from Light Efficient Design here to talk to us today about, hey, the COVID-19 crisis and how the lighting industry is dealing with it. But before we get into that, we'd like to tell you a little bit about the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors, who's bringing this all to you, Greg. That's right, NALD.org. Sign up, join us, get into it. Let's go. In times of crisis, you need to be associated. Welcome to the show, Tim Taylor. It's good to be here. Say hi to Greg Eric. Hey, Greg, how you doing? Good, Tim. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna dive into some things, but first, you know, I want to. Your company is a little unique, and, and to some degree, at least to me, and I'll tell you why is because um, it's newer. It's you guys were formed in two thousand eight, but at least on my end, you were one of the first, if not the first, company that got into LED lighting. We were, uh, yeah, we were at the forefront, uh, 2008 seemed like yesterday. Um, but I, I had worked with Intermatic and, uh, for 27 years and we were working on a bunch of stuff in the led category and, uh, knew, knowing it was the future, I had to kind of reshape my career. And, uh, I started this company and, uh, all we did was focus on led and we were one of the first companies that brought high quality leds into the U S market. How did you know in 2008 that LED was going to be the way to go? Because a lot of companies didn't. Well, I happened to be uh, heavily involved in uh, the Malibu lighting line, which was uh, landscape lighting. And, and we were doing big numbers in LED solar garden lighting. And so, it, you know, back then you couldn't get enough light out of it uh, to really use it commercially. But for garden lighting, it worked. And I, uh, I knew that the technology was, was exponentially improving every year. So just getting in there from the start, I knew it was going to become a major uh, factor in the lighting business. How hard was it for you to come up with a name that was LED? <laughs> um, actually, I started with light emitting design and then another company had already uh, trademarked it. So that's where uh, light efficient design came from. But we thought, you know, if we could put LED front of all of our numbers and we kind of become known as led you know we want that's what we wanted our brand to be so uh, it just it just came up with it and I quite explain it but maybe a little lucky <laughs> no it worked out so i assume you guys uh, get or got a lot of your product from china is that still the case we 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 did uh start uh we actually when we started the company we had a an engineer that actually lived in california but he uh he came from the lighting uh, field and understood LEDs, the first, the first concept. But he would go over and make sure that the factories were right and the product we brought in was right. Um, but then we, we started uh, using, I had a relationship from Malibu, the guy that made all that stuff for us, a uh, personal friend, and he, he started his own factories there. And uh, so now we have an exclusive arrangement where we co-develop product he only sells to uh, or provides product to us, and uh, we won't go and get anything from anyone else uh, as long as we developed it together. Where in China is it? Shenzhen. Shenzhen, okay. Yeah, Southern. And had, did you, uh, with the whole coronavirus issue, did you guys have any issues getting product, or have you had any issues? Well, uh, like most of us, as we were coming into the Chinese New Year, uh, all of a sudden, you know, we became aware that the, the factories weren't going to come back on right away. Um, so we started, uh, you know, communicating on a regular basis. Fortunately, uh, we had uh, beefed up our inventory quite a bit before the Chinese New Year in anticipation, because oftentimes coming out of that, your, your flow of product is not always as consistent as you'd like. So we, we kind of beefed up. So we were we were fortunate. Um, and today, supply chain is not, not the issue. That's pretty well back in place. Um, as we all know, now the issue is how quickly are we going to come out of this? How quickly? <laughs> Answer it, Tim. <laughs> that is, that is uh, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're doing okay right now. We get, uh, we're probably at about 50% of the number of orders that, uh, we're used to, um, and uh, 
there's a lot of projects that were are being worked on now as people are shut down from doing their regular work. Um, but it's going to take time. I, I think it's going to take uh, three or four months for us to, once they let us get back up and, and out on the street, it's going to take three or four months before this thing comes comes all the way back. Why? Why not just blast out of the gate hot? Well, um, first off, I don't think every part of the country will open up it, it all at once. I think uh, as I look at uh, what the politicians and the newsmakers are talking about, I think we will come out of this uh, depending on how bad uh, the virus is attacking in different parts of the country. We'll open up those areas where it's not as big an issue first. Um, and then start to open up areas as people become more comfortable. But even with that, I think people are going to be a little tentative to start. I'm not sure our distributors are going to want salespeople coming into their establishments right away. They may say, you know what, let's take this slow. Uh, maybe we do continue to do some uh, video conferencing and, and email and phone calls to, to get this thing started before we we get groups of people back again, but it's hard to predict. But I do think it's going to take a while. I, I just don't think everyone's going to get up one day and go back to the way we did things. You know, it's interesting that you're kind of taking it, you're, you're, you're stepping back, you're looking at it and going, Hey, we're, are you guys financially able to manage a longer term crisis? Like, it, is there a chance that, you know, light efficient design, um, have, do you have like a war chest that you're able to, really sit back on a little bit and play it safe for a bit? Uh, yeah, we're going to be fine. We, uh, we are uh, financially stable. Uh, our balance sheet is strong. Um, we, we have uh, uh, put in an application for the uh, Payroll Protection Act, which uh, our bank yesterday told us that we're approved. So that gives you a, a couple months of payroll to, uh, to work off. And uh, and then you know if we keep this fifty percent thing uh, going, yeah, we could go for quite a while. Do you see the issue? So I remember when this whole thing started. Greg uh, called me up, and there was a president of one of our nail vendors in his office saying, "There's going to be an issue with the supply chain." Remember that, Greg? I do. And and now it's like, well, how are we going to recover back from the demand? I, is there anything light efficient design can do or nailed members can do or any of us on the distributor side can do to really kickstart that demand? Well, um, I'm hoping, you know, they're talking about a fourth piece of this uh, government uh, support or uh, uh, money they're going to throw into the economy. But I'm hoping that they put, you know, lighting, lighting retrofits would be a great place for them to, to put some stimulus money. Oh yeah, <laughs> right? for us it'd be great. <laughs> so we, we should all be contacting our congressmen, and uh, yeah, I'm hoping our association as a group would be would be uh, taking the power of a group and, uh, and and contacting them. But that's that's one way I'm hoping that's going to happen. Um, the other thing is, uh, uh, you know, why we're we're not doing some of the the work that uh, we might normally do, um, getting yourself ready. So when when this thing does open up, uh, you know, making sure all your I's uh, are dotted, T's crossed, uh, all your processes are, are, you know, if you had a little deficiencies in there, we're, we're spending some time making sure we're we're getting our business lined up so it's as efficient as it can be when we do do come back out of this. Lighting is infrastructure. Um, and uh, there's a lot of talk. I was listening to uh, some news last night about, you know, a lot of this money is going to go towards infrastructure. Um, I know we laughed about it, but I see no, I think there's a great case to be made to congressmen. And I think Greg, after the show, I think Tim's made a good point. We should contact Spencer and say, Hey, let's send a letter to every single congressman in the U S Congress saying, Hey, we think this number, some of this money could be allocated for lighting. And here's why. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing you guys might do is put together a form letter that we all could use. And we'll, you know, we have right now, uh, all the, all the members put something out to the members and ask us to all participate in this as well. Mm. Yes. I think that's a, that's a, actually a one, a great idea for the industry, um, which is why we're doing this. Uh, I think, I think it's, uh, the lighting is critical infrastructure. 
And I know they're talking about airports and roads and all that, but guess what? There's lighting on airports and roads and in all these infrastructure facilities. And uh, I think it's a, and you know, there's just no, everybody knows there's no better payback than a lighting project if environmentally in terms of uh, cash to the person doing it. And then uh, the, the appeal of better light, which is a place I think we are, Greg. Yeah, that's right. It'd be an interesting concept, something we should definitely dive into. And you said it was a, a fourth piece, Tim. What, what did you mean by that? Yeah, well, I think Congress right now is working on, a, a, you know, the fourth leg of this a stimulus package to help the economy come back. And so they're talking wow. about infrastructure as part of that. And I'm hoping that that uh, lighting retrofits are actually called out in that as, as where some money can be used and they'll support that kind of work. Tim, that's a great idea. <laughs> no, it really is. Yeah. Um, there's no reason why not that why Nailed can't do that, and then bring in some of our partner companies like um, IES to join us on that, and you know Naumco, and we can talk to all these people and just say, yeah. hey, we support, support NEMA support. should be there. Yeah. NEMA should be there. I mean, all of them. For sure. For sure. Um, what's your when you're planning when you're when you're doing your? Do you have a uh, crisis task force at Light Efficient Design? Well, we have our, our uh, we call it staff, but our senior level. <laughs> <laughs> we and, call it uh, our staff. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, you know, the, there's there's six of us that uh, we're, we're meeting on a regular basis and uh, talking about the issues. Uh, and, and it's changing. Uh, mm-hmm. Time, I mean, you know, at first everyone thought, okay, this is just a couple of weeks and then let's go. And now it's it's six weeks and, and we don't know. Uh, so you got a supply chain that's geared up. First, it's geared up for a two-week shutdown. Now we're at six week, and then how long uh, does it take to go back up? So we're 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 looking at those things all the time and uh, making sure that we're not going to get ourselves. Uh, well, you never know, but we want to make sure we don't have too much inventory. All of a sudden, our cash flow could choke us or lack of. Uh, as well as we got to make sure we have enough inventory as this thing comes back on that we can serve our customers right. Now, you guys have some pretty innovative product, in my opinion, at least, or you've come out with some LEDs uh, ahead of time from other people. Uh, but is it is now more difficult time to innovate, or is it actually a better time where you can focus more on that? Uh, we're actually uh, taking advantage of the time. Um, we're uh, we're getting together, you know, virtually, but uh, you know, and working on a product development and, and speeding up uh, some of the uh, development time um, because we have a more time that we may we may normally have because we'd be pulled in too many different directions. So it's an opportunity. Good. And have you has it caused you to change any of your processes in terms? You said the supply chain is not an issue. Well, it's an issue if you, I mean, we watch it all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, if supply chain, when you've got, uh, you know, a 90 or 120 day uh, uh, lead time. So it's it's always an issue, but um, trying to predict, you know, what we're going to need. And so we, we pay a lot of attention to that. Um, but then the, uh, you know, your new product development, the, just the process itself is always needs so we're working on that. Very good. What do you what do you see as uh, the future of lighting? What, what's a lighting market going to look like in six months? What's it going to look like in a year? You said well, it's I think be different. Uh, you know, innovation is still going to be key. Uh, it's key to our, you know, who we are. Uh, we'll always be innovative. We we want to have products that a little bit little ahead of the curve, and uh, so we. We organize our company around making sure we can do that. Um, but I, I, I think the market is still, uh, you know, once we get through this, it's a great market to be in. It's going to continue to grow. There'll continue to be more efficiencies. Uh, you know, the control piece of it will continue to evolve. It'll become simpler. Um, so it, it, I think it's a great space. Tim Taylor, Light Efficient Design. Thanks for being a guest on the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast leadership series. Hey, you guys take care and uh, be safe. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Thanks to Tim Taylor of Light Efficient Design for coming on the leadership series. Tim, great idea. I think we're going to do that letter for sure. And we're going to put it out as an open letter. And I think maybe we'll even mail it to the congressmen and women out there. Greg, what do you think? 
I think we're going to have to get after it. It's a good, good idea and something we should uh, do as an association. That's our goal mm-hmm. and job right now. So let's get after it. Do it. So the government relations committee just got formed. And we're going to have the committee. It's on right now. And uh, of course, guys, get associated. Get associated with the innovative lighting distributors that are national and international. Well, Canada is not really international. They don't even let you go to the Delta Club Lounge when you're flying to Canada because they don't consider it international. So go to NAILD.org, baby. That's nil.org for information on joining our association. Check us out. Bye for now.